I want to talk about the Pez Outlaw. It's a documentary um, directed by uh, Amy Bandley and Storkel and um, co-directed by Brian Storkel. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I didn't have a chance to look it up. So if I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. And uh, it's about a guy who's starting in the 1980s, uh, Stephen Glue. He made trips to a uh, Pez factory in Eastern Europe to bring back um, Pez dispensers that weren't sold via the U.S. branch of Pez in the United States. And he made thousands upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars doing this. Due to a bureaucratic hiccup from Pez, customs could never stop this person from uh, smuggling in all these Pez dispensers. So the CEO of the U.S. side of Pez, Scott McWeeny, who went by the president, that, that is the actual nickname he went by, um, he, um, he got really mad. And he's, the documentary is about how uh, Stephen uh, Glue got started doing this, how Pez reacted, how the CEO of Pez tried to stop him. It's insane. Um, it, it is a reenactment doc, and I know some people have a problem with that, but the reenactments are so unique because they're not there to just visually represent the facts of the case. They are being used to put viewers into the mindset of Stephen Glue. Um, his first visit he describes as being very Wonka-esque, like he, he entered Wonka's chocolate factory. And so the, the, the color palette's very bright and vivid. There's literally a magical little like sprite thing, uh, flinging, uh, pixie dust all over the place. Later on, he's more paranoid. People are out to get him. He believes he's being followed. So then it's this like crazy espionage thriller, like you're watching The Good German or something. Um, the, it, it, mind you, there, there is debate whether people were actually following her, him or not. That, not sure if that's true. Uh, but it doesn't matter if that's true because it's how he felt. And the filmmakers do an amazing job at getting everybody to understand uh, exactly how we felt at any given moment for this. So who's, uh, so I assume this movie is kind of anti-corporate Pez or? Uh... Um, it's more anti this one person. Um, so, uh, this one so, person. Uh, let me, let me get this straight then. The, the guy who went, what's the, the subject's name? Uh, Steven Blue, G-L-E-W. All right. And so is he portrayed kind of as the bad guy in the film or? Not uh, in the slightest. He... he is very Robin Hood-esque. Um, you, you know he's doing illegal things. You don't care. You're rooting for him from the very, uh, very beginning. Um, and so let's get this straight, though. The illegal thing he's doing is he's essentially finagling customs. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So um, due to the contract uh, U.S. Pez has with the headquarters in Vienna, uh, the only way Pez dispensers enter the United States of America is by what the head of the U.S. Pez decides will be sold there. Mm -hmm. um, so he's smuggling in these uh, non-U.S. approved variants and oh, or just designs that aren't there whatsoever. Um, and he, because he's the only one who has them, he's selling them to Pez collectors for hundreds of dollars a piece when he paid, you know, a dollar per one, maybe less than that, depending. Mm -hmm. um, but the movie is absolutely on his side. You will be on his side, too especially later in the movie when his romance with his wife becomes part of the main focus. <laughs> um, the cool thing about the film is it's got something for everybody. It is a corporate espionage thriller. It is this flight of fancy thing from how the reenactments are done. It's this crazy, absurd, stranger than fiction, true life tale of smuggling, something that you would have never thought one would smuggle. It's a really sweet romantic comedy. Him and his wife are so perfect for each other. You're going to get choked up. My wife almost cried watching it with me at times. <laughs> and he's such a good husband. He's making every other husband just look bad by, by how good he is. It's frustrating, to be honest. That's amazing. 
All right, let's. Uh, we got some comments uh, for Bobby here. Uh, it's a Gungan says, uh, US Pez heads have accepted representation, representation for far too long. Yeah, when you give one guy way too much power, and uh, and it, it, yeah, this this one guy has the ability to kind of say what what you're allowed to collect and what you're not allowed to collect, yeah. and and the idea that you can go to jail, and lose everything is is uh is amazing, says a whole lot. Um, Ooh, going against Jimmy Dorla. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Here we go. Free the Pez. I shall flock to my theater. Yes. Um, you know, if, if it's as good as you make it sound, I'm sure it's going to find its way to theater or some streaming in some way. Uh, and then, man, uh, Gabriel says, man, I didn't know Pez was such a serious subject matter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that, you know, this Neither is did I. It's awesome. Uh, Oh, Bobby, you gonna say something? Uh, yeah, sorry, I thought you were going to. Um, oh, no, go but yeah, um, I didn't know it was this serious either. But the the movie, uh, it it interviews the, the filmmakers interview collectors uh, of Pez and uh, that sort of thing. And every collector they talk to is like the sweetest person in the world. They're all really loving, nice people. Um, and so it's not some, oh, all these collectors are nerds and they suck kind of thing. It loves this community. It loves Pez. And you're going to want to go out and get some Pez just to support them afterwards, in fact. Yeah. yeah, and you would think if Pez wanted to make money, they would just, you know, sell it. I mean... That uh, that comes up. I don't want to spoil anything. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't spoil that. All right. And then Chris Gore says, can't wait to see this Pez dog. I, I can't wait to see it either. Thank you.